Around the world, just 14% of engineers are female. If girls grew up with puzzles instead of dolls, would that still be the case? Debbie Sterling doesn't think so. The mechanical engineer founded Goldie Blocks, a toy company aimed to show girls that engineering can be cool. She also has a knack for her videos going viral. Overnight, eight and a half million people viewed her parody of the Beastie Boys song, Girls, in her sassy Girls Gone Rube Goldberg wild video. But that wasn't her first hit. I asked her about her very first video she ever did, I Want a Goat. Here's what she had to say. I spent about seven months living in rural India doing volunteer work. It was this period in my life where you know, I wanted to do something good for humanity. And while I was there, I found this amazing program. Uh, this woman from England actually would go every year and raise money from her friends at home and then go and buy goats for villagers. And I'd seen it firsthand how they transformed. And I thought, well, I could do this with my friends. I could get them all to donate 20 bucks or so and we could buy goats for villagers. My husband, boyfriend at the time, Bo, had started his own video production company and he was making all of these YouTube videos. And we thought, well, what if we had some fun with this and made a YouTube video of these villagers kind of rapping, I want a goat. And we made the video and we also made this website where you could donate a goat for $20, but then you could add accessories and bling it out with like Manolo Blahniks and Ugg boots and, <laughs> and a mohawk for extra money. And we ended up raising over $30,000. Then you come up with tech toys for girls and educational toys for girls and create another video that goes viral. Girls. So it's in your DNA to do these viral videos. Well, you know, the thing is that when I had first came up with the idea for Goldie Blocks, I just thought it was so obvious. One of, the, one of those ideas that's so simple, how does it not exist? And when I made my first prototype and I showed it to people in the toy industry, they all said it wasn't going to sell. And the traditional way that normally a toy company starts is you make a minimum run, you sell it into the local toy stores, and you go from there. But I knew that wasn't going to work for me, and so that's when I decided to crowdfund it. What do you say to those people who said it wouldn't work? The people who said it wouldn't work, right after the campaign went live, started picking up the phone and calling and, and wanted to carry the toys. <laughs> so uh, now they're my partners. and. Uh, you know, every now and then I love to say I told you so. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do, though, to get the message out to uh, everybody, the toy industry, parents who don't yet understand the value of STEM education for their kids and how important it is. You, in this video, used the Beastie Boys song, Girls, and you did your own take on it. And then there were some legal issues around it. Did you expect to get that, that kind of response from the Beastie Boys? No, we made this video and we wanted to have fun with it, really. We were Beastie Boys fans ourselves and picked this song and we thought, let's, let's do a spin on it, let's do a parody and turn it into a message of girl empowerment and that that would be a really creative, kind of edgy way to get the word out how cool engineering is, especially for girls. We didn't have a marketing budget, you know, we weren't distributing this on national TV. We put up a YouTube video and none of us really realized that overnight this video was going to get eight and a half million views and just explode and go viral. So it was a challenging time for me personally and You're the company. simultaneously excited. We got eight plus million views but you also have this potential legal action on the side that has to be totally stressing you out. We were very naive and really just wanted to send the message out. Finding ways to make engineering cool and accessible to girls, bottom line, is you know what we're all about. So. I think you got the message out even more. <laughs> I really do. I, I think more people focused on the story because of the controversy than if there wasn't. So on some levels, it was a blessing in disguise. Well, you know, we certainly weren't expecting it and certainly didn't want it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we ended up settling and uh, giving a donation to charities that promote STEM education for girls. So everyone won. Everybody won. You also got the ad on the Super Bowl. That's a pretty big deal. We, we beat out 15,000 small businesses. And, you know, I think the reason why we won is because we launched with this crowdfunding campaign, right? We were on Kickstarter and we had these 5,000 backers who in a way now are our biggest advocates because if it weren't for them, we wouldn't exist. And so when we went out to ask for votes, we had these people who voted for us and told all of their friends and family 
to vote for us, and they did. How big of a deal was having your company featured in a Super Bowl ad? Did it change the business? Did you get millions upon millions of hits right away? It was pretty explosive. I remember we only had about 10 employees, and so we flew everybody out to New York to watch the commercial, and when it happened, you know, it, it just felt like this history-making moment where the commercial itself really was this girl power kind of rally cry to you know, throw out your pink toys and, you know, and, and build your own rocket ship. Since then, really, I think that the um, commercial helped take the company to the next level and gave us new opportunities. For example, this year, the float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Right. How did you choose that? We were trying to come up with how, how do we make engineering cool and accessible to girls? Similarly, parade floats are engineering marvels. Growing up, I always dreamed of becoming the princess waving on the float. Well, this is our opportunity to create a float where every girl could look at it and maybe not just dream of becoming the princess on the float, but building her own float. So much of your focus has been getting girls more interested in technology, engineering, mathematics, all of these fields that females are gen genuinely underrepresented in. What do you think is the biggest thing holding young girls back for pursuing that? I think it's our culture. I really do. Engineering and technology is a boys club, and that club starts when we're little kids. There are characters like Bob the Builder, Handy Manny, Sid the Science Guy, Jimmy Neutron. I mean, the list goes on and on. Engineering and science is for these boy geniuses. So from a young age, when you're kind of developing your identity of what a little girl is and what she should be interested in, I mean, those topics, they just don't show up. And I think that that's where Goldie Blocks can step in and change that conversation early on. Thank you so much for joining us for Real Biz. We want to hear from you. Is there a special woman in your life that is giving back to your community? Tell us about her. Like us, tweet us at Rebecca Jarvis and comment below. And from the studios in New York City, I'm Rebecca Jarvis. Have a great day.